Unreal Engine 5 is now available in early access and quite frankly, it's amazing. I haven't made any videos about Unreal Engine on this channel yet, but it feels like a really appropriate time to do so because of the really cool new features that have been added to UE5, more specifically the Nanite and the Lumen systems, which I'm sure many of you have already heard about. So as we can see on the screen now, Lumen is Unreal Engine 5's new fully dynamic, keyword dynamic, global illumination and reflection system that's designed for next generation consoles. So this basically helps you to get the effect of bounce lighting, global illumination on different objects reacting to the lighting conditions in the scene without having to bake all that information into static light maps meaning that it will react to all kinds of dynamic objects. And one thing that's interested me in particular is how this reacts to emissive material lighting as well. Now, the other big feature that's been grabbing lots of people's attention is Nanite, the new Nanite virtualized geometry feature. And what this does is it's super impressive. It lets you have millions or billions of polys represented on the screen while maintaining a smooth frame rate. Now, of course, when you do this, billions of triangles aren't necessarily being calculated for every frame. There's some very clever trickery going on to make this work, but the results are just fantastic. Basically, it calculates and only tries to render details that can be seen on a pixel level. Now, a really important point to take away from this before I show you how to use it in Unreal Engine is that being able to have this work, especially for static meshes and objects for your game environments, means that retopology is not really a necessity anymore. It also means that LODs or level of detail objects are automatically generated. So if this keeps developing and game companies are going to be adapting their roles to work around this new engine, then people that are specialized in retopology and LOD building might have to try adapting to new pipelines and workflows. And of course, you might think, okay, well, this is probably too good to be true. And well, there is the downside of the if you're packaging in this extremely high poly content into your game files and of course that's going to take up a significant amount of storage space now that's already a problem that the game industry is dealing with now some companies are trying new compression techniques some companies are going for a more of a vaulted system where they take a certain amount of content from the games and package it away and then bring in new content and cycle it around so the games don't get too large so it seems like storage space is now going to become the bottleneck, not actual performance of representing the geometry and the objects on screen. So let me jump over to Unreal Engine here. Now, one unfortunate side effect of rendering with maybe two instances of OBS open at once is uh, the actual frames that I'm seeing on the screen and the frames that you're seeing on the screen are not the same. So if you look on the right of the viewport up here, you can see a frame counter and it's kind of flickering between like 70 and 90-ish. And as I move around, it's staying fairly consistent. So on my screen, I'm seeing a really smooth performance and on your screen, you may see it's slightly more jagged, but still pretty good, I, I would imagine. Now, I have no idea how many millions or billions of polys I have on the screen right now. But one thing that I can do is I can enable a Nanite visualization to kind of give you a bit of an idea for what's happening on the screen. So if we go up to the top here, see where I have lit, and then I can go down to Nanite visualization and then overview. This will now split up the viewport and we can see different categories of data that the Nanite system is using to basically construct what we're seeing on the screen. In the top left, this is the interesting one because this shows all of the actual triangles. So as I zoom into this mesh of this statue, this Roman object here, you can see up here in the top left that individual triangles, each of the original triangles is being represented and there's so many of them. So this is basically like a raw photogrammetry and maybe slightly cleaned up object that's just been straight up imported into the game engine. And as we zoom out, you can see how dynamically it's reducing the number of triangles that are rendered to the screen. It only needs to show what can be seen visibly on the pixel level. So again, just look at all that noise up there. I have no idea how many triangles are being rendered here, but the performance is just magnificent. So another thing that's impressed me about this is that it's not just the viewport looking around that's very smooth and high frame rate. It's also the editor performance, because if I selected all of these objects like I've got here, these environment pieces, I can just copy and paste them with all their like billions of triangles and move them around, rotate them all, move them perfectly fine, perfectly smooth. And then we can just jump back in and explore all of this individual detail. So the system works just magnificently. It's, it's honestly really impressive. It's a massive step up for game engines and editor performance. And I do think it's going to be a bit of a game changer in that regard. I think that a lot of other softwares, a lot of other game engines, and maybe even Blender especially, will need to step up their game when it comes to representing just billions of polygons on the screen. But of course, it's not just a matter of drag and drop your object in and that's it, it just works. No, you need to specifically flag the individual objects it, that you're importing into the game engine to use the Nanite system. So just to give you a bit of a demonstration, these objects that I've imported in here are from the Quixel bridge. So if I go up to content, 
and then choose Quixel Bridge, it will open up the window. But all of the content available from Quixel Megascans is available for anyone using Unreal Engine to use freely. We can take a look at anything in here. Maybe I want to go to 3D Assets, then Nature, because these tend to have very high poly counts. Then maybe let me choose Rock, Boulder. Let me add some grays into this scene. Uh, Nordic Beach. And then if we take a look at this drop down over here for the different quality levels of the object, you will see specifically a Nanite option. So if we choose that, and then we can download this from Quixel Bridge. I will also show you how to set up your own models for Nanite in a moment as well. But now I'll just wait for this to finish downloading. And of course, these files are going to be quite large in size, especially when compared to retopologized objects, because these have the full poly counts. All right, so now that's downloaded, we can press the Add button. And by default, it will automatically put this into a Megascans folder structure. So we can see down here, Megascans, 3D Assets, and then all of the packages are listed by their appropriate names. So let me close this. I can find the Nordic Beach Rocks and we can see that it's now importing, building mesh distance fields. If I double click on this, I can inspect the object. And now there's something very important to point out here. Um, when I've imported some assets from the Quixel bridge, some of them are already automatically set up for Nanite, but others I've had to manually enable. So this is how you do it. Once you're inspecting your asset, on the right, you can see a section called Nanite settings. Now under here, you have quite obviously the enabled tick box, so you want to tick this and then press apply changes. And now it's going to process the object to make it usable by the Nanite system. All right, so here we go. Now it's ready for Nanite to use, which means that it doesn't matter how many polys this has, it's now going to perform very nicely inside of our scene. So I press save up here and then I can close this, go back to our main scene and drag the static mesh in. And then if you really wanted, you could just go crazy with it, just without a care in the world, copy as many times as you like. Millions of polygons, who cares? Doesn't matter to us. We just want our artistic freedom, uh, whatever. It just it just works. They, honestly, it just works. It's crazy. So if you were going to import your own models, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to go into the Asset Inspector and enable Nanite there. Alternatively, when you're importing the objects, I believe an option will appear there as well, which lets you set up for Nanite right away on import. So a note to make about the Lumen system for the uh, global illumination is that we can actually kind of control the strength of the indirect lighting the lights are providing. So I've selected the sunlight object here and I can change the intensity to make it brighter. And you can see that as I'm making it brighter and darker, it's taking a moment for the rest of the scene to update. You can see this kind of flickering light effect going on as it's trying to calculate the bounce lighting going on in the scene. Now I've made this quite strong on purpose for demonstration purposes, but if you look down here, you can see the indirect lighting option. So by default, this will be something quite low. And if we set it down, obviously the scene becomes very dark because there's not much global illumination going on, but we can scrub this up. There's a soft limit of six and that gives us a bit of a slight effect, but you can push it further. So if I chose 50, all of a sudden the illumination becomes so much stronger. So you can play around. I like how they've kind of exposed these values and they haven't imposed hard limits, which means that we can have more artistic control with the systems. If you want to double check that you are actually using Lumen, then if you go to Edit and then Project Settings, then scroll down to the Engine section under Rendering. And then in here, if we go down, we can see Global Illumination is set to Lumen and Reflections is also set to Lumen, but you have other options available if you like. Now, the benefits of Nanite and Lumen for the context of video games are pretty obvious. It's going to give uh, like level designers so much more artistic freedom just to make exactly what they want to make without having to worry about technical budgets and limitations. It's going to improve the performance of video games for the players, which is going to be just fantastic. But Unreal Engine has been designed now not just for video games, but also for virtual production and visual effects. And I think this is just going to make it so much nicer for artists to design their own kinds of, well, who knows, cinematics, animations, short films, and any kind of other graphical tool. So I really like what they're doing. I think it's very impressive. And I think the other graphical software developers will now have to step up to the occasion to compete with these kinds of features. Now, even though these features are very impressive, neither of these is my favorite new change to Unreal Engine. My favorite, in fact, is the UI change. They have improved the user interface. They've made it so much cleaner, so much nicer. And it means that now, as you can see on the screen here, I basically set this up to look like how I used to use Unity for years because I'm much more comfortable with that kind of layout. But I just love how trim everything is now and how it doesn't feel like it was designed by a 12 year old. Because like who came up with the idea of using hazard tape on the user interface? I'm so glad that's gone now. But there are a couple of things that I think they could still improve in that regard. Uh, one of the things is in the material editors, 
I really hate these kind of node headers here, just how they've got this kind of glossy color to them. Like the kind of things that you would see on an early 2000s website navigation bar just to look kind of funky and hip and oh, look at our cool graphics that we have. I think it would be much nicer if these were just like flat colors and made a bit more trim. But other than that, I think like everything that they've been doing with this is really cool. And I think it's a massive step in the right direction. So I'm very interested in playing around with this more, maybe for some animation projects, we'll have to wait and see. If you're interested in seeing some Unreal content, then let me know. But I'm going to be analyzing and assessing the pipeline between Blender and Unreal. And you know me, if there's any way I can simplify something, make a tool for something, then I will see what can be done. So thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to give Unreal Engine 5 a try, then you can download it from the Epic Games launcher. And if you want to play around with the stuff on Quixel Bridge, then you can use your Epic login. But if you previously had a Quixel login, then you will need to go to the website and link those accounts. So thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.